Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at how we can utilize Splunk Enterprise to feed in Cisco ICE information. To start off with, we need to ensure that we have connectivity between our ICE system and Splunk Enterprise. Please check your environment to make sure that you do so before carrying on. If you have connectivity between ICE and your Splunk system, we can start off by going to ICE, Administration, Login, and Remote Login Targets. And what we do here is we configure our remote login targets. So I've already got mine configured, but I'll just click Edit to run through. So you can see I've named mine Splunk underscore lab. Target type is UDP syslog, so it's using 514. And that's my IP address of my Splunk host. You can change your facility code as you wish, or leave it how it is. Once you've config configured your target, go to Logging Categories, and select the items in which you want to send syslog for. So, for instance, if we double click, uh, click the radio button, triple A audit, and then edit, we get our option then to select our target. So, as you can see, my targets are already specified and selected. Once you've specified your syslog target, click save. Head over to Splunk and log into Splunk and you'll be presented with a dashboard like this. For this demonstration I am using Splunk Enterprise the free edition. Once logged in click find more apps and then in the find apps by keyword type ice and press enter. You should be presented with two options we need to install the first option. As you can see, mine is already installed, so it's just prompting me to open the actual app. Go ahead and install Splunk for Cisco Identity Services if you've not already got it installed, and then return back to the dashboard. You should then on the left hand side be able to see underneath your apps another tab called Cisco Eyes. So now we need to actually configure Splunk to feed in our Cisco ICE information. So we need to head over to Settings, Data Inputs, and dependent on what ports you specified, you may be using maybe TCP or UDP, um, for this example, we'll just go ahead and use TCP. And you can see I already have one listener already configured using TCP port 1468. But we'll go ahead and create a new one so that you can see the process. So underneath the port, you need to specify the port in which it should listen for. This is also specified if we click back on ICE and underneath the remote login target that you've just configured, you should be able to see the port that you've specified. And then back over to Splunk. So enter that port, so 514. Leave the rest of the settings as they are. Click Next. So for source type, we need to filter down for ICE. And then we need to select the first option, which is Cisco ICE. In terms of app context, we want to select the Cisco ICE for Splunk. And then our method, we're going to be using IP. Leave the index as default. Click review. Review your settings and if you're happy with them, click submit. Now you can start searching on that port. Now because I've just input 
an example there. This will not fulfill my search, so we won't get any results. However, if I click on the app for Cisco ICE, once you have information feeding into Splunk, you should be presented with the following. Just give it a minute to load up. You can filter on the left hand side based on what uh, time frame you want to see in terms of information. For the last 60 minutes I have no results but if I change this to today and submit we should be able to get some information to show you briefly what it looks like once you have ice feeding information. And there you have it. So we've got a We've got bits of information here, authentication summary in terms of succeed and failed, DACL succeed, and we also have a list of other, we also have a few other tabs across here, so we could go to authentication pass summary, we've got device summary, posture, profiler, and a lot more. But just to see this information, Again, if I just change this to today on past authentications, we can see that we've got past authentication by location. I only have one location. And then if we click on that, we can drill down further into the information and you can see that the search here gives us a lot more information. Now with this information, you can see a lot more in terms of um, the you know for for an audit trail so you can see that the host you can see the port in which it's listening for and you can see the source type which is what we configured already you've also got a lot more information in terms of um, MAC addresses IP addresses of the NADs ports in which um, the device is authenticated in is it doing mab.1x, uh, the network device name, there's a, there's a myriad of information here. So you can see that this information is quite important and quite detailed and quite useful. And that is simply how you configure Splunk and ICE to work together so that you can feed information from ICE into Splunk. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.